So hiking in the Kew Creek trails, there's multiple trails in this area. You can go many miles in many directions, but we're just starting up the trails. Nice little waterfall here as we approach the bridge. You can see it's uh, it's April 1st. This is not an April Fool's joke. This really is the amount of snow we have April 1st. So I got a bridge to cross and then I'm on my way. One of the advantages of hiking uh, in spring when the snow and ice is still here is I'm actually standing over the river on ice and snow. And the river's below me flowing underneath me. So there's the river. But uh, this is McHugh Creek actual. Like I said before, that's my uh, official Battlestar Galactus, Battlestar Galactica speak. Duh, I can't talk today. But yes, this is McHugh Creek actual. And there's Cricket. So, more video from being on the bridge. The river's down below. Before I was out standing over the river, now I'm on the bridge over the river. Uh, this must be a stout bridge because it's got to have a couple tons of snow on it right now, snow and ice. But as you can see, lots of nice scenery. And seriously, I'm like 300 yards from a parking lot, so you don't have to be in great shape to come out and enjoy Alaska's wilderness. So, and for those who worry about getting lost, there are directional signs. You can go to Rainbow and Windy. This is the Turnigan Arm Trail. And that tells port towards Potter. I think it should be Potter Marsh, but whatever. Okay, and the wildlife is out. There's a woodpecker up there. That's Woody. You can probably see him in the center there. Underneath that branch, moving around. So if you're a bird aficionado, come out, hike the trails, and look for the birds. Okay, and the other wildlife just a few feet away from Woody the Woodpecker, we have Mr. Moose. I haven't, so I guess that would be Bullwinkle or Mrs. Bullwinkle. She's not had calves yet, so she's not too grumpy. I ain't going to try to scoot by her, but she's only 20 feet from the trail. The funny thing was, is walking up the trail, I said, wow, there's really fresh moose tracks in front of me. They're still wet from being in the river. And uh, that's why, because she's only was a few feet in front of me. So she just crossed the river a few moments back. Anyways, there she is. And I am going to put the camera away and then scoot by her really fast. But more wildlife as you explore. Pod, uh, where am I? I'm at McHugh Creek. Once again, the trails are marked, so getting lost is not easy. Uh, but people do do it back here. Somehow people do manage to get lost and... Uh, some people disappear forever, others are found, and uh, some become bear, bear, yeah, some become barefoot. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the trails are marked and it is basically safe. Just more views as you walk the trail. The trail in front of me takes you up to Miku Lake. That's a couple, three hours of hiking, maybe more. Not going that way today, but... Obviously, it's still winter here, even though it's April 1st, but nothing's turning green at all yet. And there you go, just some more scenery. And we start with this big boulder here, probably an erratic, left by a glacier. Pan around slowly. Everything's still sleeping for winter. That's uh, the inlet over there, so between us and those mountains is the ocean. And come all the way around. I'm following because the ground is giving, the snow is giving way below me. So there's what we see as we hike along the Miku Creek Trail towards Potter Marsh. Okay, literally, I only took like three steps, but you have a totally different view. That's the interesting thing about being in the wilderness is you only need to take a couple steps and you get a whole new view. And as I swing around, we'll be able to see the ocean here. So that shiny stuff out there through the trees below the mountain, that's the ocean. So I don't know if you can zoom in a bit on it, but yeah, that shiny stuff that's now the center of the screen, that's the ocean. So uh, like I said, you don't have to move but a couple feet and you get a whole new view, which is 
One of the amazing things about being out in the wilderness. And this is just to show the trail. Uh, as I say, I got cricket leading me, so I'll never go out in the wilderness alone. Always have at least a dog with you. Um, it really does help. This is what the trail looks like, just covered in snow. And the scenery, I'm in the shade, there's the sun. Uh, so it's colder in the shade. The sun is actually effective this time of year, which is a good thing. Uh, but as you can see, we're just walking down the trail. This is a nice trail for those who aren't in the best of shape because it is fairly flat and level. There's only a few places that have any uh, grade change at all. So for those who don't want to go in the mountains, this is a nice trail to hike. And we come to a little footbridge. So Cricket leads the way. And coming back out into the sunshine, enjoying turning an arm trail. So here I have a much better view of the ocean. And uh, you have to drive all along the ocean to get here, so standing here looking at the ocean isn't as big a deal as you would think. But it's still nice to stand here in the forest and look out over the scenery. Off in that direction, if it was clear, there's some volcanoes, but it's too hazy to see the volcanoes today. So, exploring some more, and I did manage to get a view where we can see the volcano. So we'll see if we can zoom in with the camera and see the volcano. But, right there, I'm not sure how well it's coming out. I can't, I can see nothing but reflection in my camera, but that's where the volcano is, and I can see it, but I don't know if my camera can. But, so that's normal, and there we have the ocean. And there you go, just the scenery along the Turnigan Arm Trail, which was accessed through the McHugh Creek Trailhead. Now, it's not quite yet full moon. Easter is approaching, but Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. So as soon as that baby's full, the next Sunday will be Easter Sunday. And uh, I think it's like 5 in the evening right now. All right, we're still hiking at the McHugh Creek Trailhead on the Turnigan Arm Trail System. But we're almost back to the parking lot, just overlooking the uh, Turnigan Arm. Actually, Turnigan Arm Trail, Turnigan Arm. And uh, there's the ocean right there. It's a beautiful day for a change. And uh, I'll pan back around and you see all of what I see. There's the highway, the railroad tracks. Up here we have the mountain and there's a moon up there somewhere. I know it, I can see it. Yep, there's the moon. Heading towards that full moon. So, just another beautiful day in paradise. Let's just do some big, big wide shots. Just some mountain views, and we'll go back out and show you. Okay, I have just moved from one lookout to the next, so just a little different view, not much. The one bad part about this location is you do hear the road noise, but you're here for the scenery, and the only way here is the highway, so gotta deal with it. But here I can go around a bit farther than the other one. Bring you all the way around. Uh, there's volcanoes over there, and then more mountains over that way. Let's see if we can zoom in and maybe see those mountains a little clearer. And I'll pan back real slowly. And then we just go back. So, there you go. Almost done with McHugh Creek. Got one more stop, and then I'm gonna call it a day. Of course, Kino stops moving as soon as I start taking video. Even oh, there another tail's going again. So she was squirreling around and rolling in the snow, but she stopped doing that. So now just boring picture of dog laying still.
Oh. I like the way the ice, ice, uh, icicles form along the rock where the water splashes. Once again, this is the McHugh Creek Actual. As you can see, it's mostly on you know, the ice right now. Not a lot of water is melting yet, but some is. And I do like those icicles. And it's just pretty to see. Let's zoom out here a bit. And here's the water and the Wonder Dog getting wet. And this concludes the visit to McHugh Creek. Here we have a nesting pair of swans. Too early for them to nest, but... Oh, disappear again. There's a head right over there. And, oh, there we got to see some body. There we go. There are the swans. So this is Potter's Marsh on the way home from McHugh Creek. And there's the swan and there's the other swan. the view of the swan. Yeah, the highway's right behind me. It's Potter Marsh. The swans will nest here and have a bunch of uh, sniglets. I call them sniglets. Signets is the right word. But they'll be nesting and laying eggs here shortly. Right now there's still too much snow. Oh, there's another head. Where did the other one go? Oh, the other one disappeared again already. There we go, there's the other swan. And uh, I don't know if they're the same pair that come here every year, but there's always at least one pair of nesting swans out here. Sometimes more. So let's uh cruise this is what I mean it's not quite ready for nesting Some more video of the swans. And it was supposed to be a McHugh Creek hike video, but let's have some swans in it too. It's rare you get to see them this close. What I'm not showing you is all the photographers, the real photographers with real cameras out here taking pictures. There are quite a lot of them. Here's a beautiful shot. Just more videos of the swans. They're moving ever closer and closer. They're only 30 feet away from me, 10 meters maybe. It's amazing the attention two birds draw. There's quite the crowd with cameras, video cameras. People with cameras that cost more than my house, probably. So. Just something interesting to see.
Okay, just a gentle reminder for everybody that wildlife conservation begins begins with the hunters. And they're the ones who pay for everything. So remember that. Um, waterfowl conservation, a lot of conservation is all paid by hunters through our licensing and fees and the excise taxes on our gear. So take into that account when you think about hunting. It is an important part for environmental management.